everyone. My name is Aman and I'm a product manager at Spotify working on Jukebox, our feature management product, which is a part of the ML platform. I know this is the last talk of the conference, so I'm gonna try and end this on a high note, no, no pressure here, uh, by diving straight into how we manage features at Spotify. So we're gonna be talking about Spotify scale. We're gonna be talking about some of the unique challenges that presents to Spotify when it comes to doing machine learning. From that, we're gonna talk about a little bit about where we were about one year ago today, where we are right now with our feature platform, where we're going and some of the lessons we've learned that you can hopefully apply at your own companies. So let's dive right into that. So let's talk a little bit about Spotify scale. Spotify is a product that's used all over the world by hundreds of millions of people every month who are constantly accessing and interacting with billions of catalog items. Um, this slide has some big numbers, but really the main takeaway is we have a lot of data and it's growing constantly. And all of that data is meaningful to continue to provide a better experience to our users with the number of use cases that leverage ML increasing. The ML platform is the infrastructure that really ties all of these pieces together and helps us level up the rate of ML at Spotify. And while Spotify scale affords some really amazing opportunities to build a great experience, it also presents unique challenges that come with scale. So at Spotify, we largely think about features as representations of data, which generally take the form of key value pairs. For example, how much a user likes a certain artist, and that's constantly undergoing changes across different ML use cases. So from a technical perspective, we perform online inference for a variety of use cases. For example, showing you a new release from an artist you love on your home screen when you open up the app. And a number of these use cases utilize near real time, low latency features. That means when users interact with the product, we can dynamically update model predictions about what to present next. On top of that, when ML engineers are creating and uh, managing features, we have an inherent challenge around offline online consistency of features, like needing to backfill data for a feature to evaluate its impact on model performance. Furthermore, because of the highly autonomous nature of our engineering function, to move fast, often engineers have to unblock themselves and may not realize that some features are common across use cases. So they end up recreating features themselves which is costly from both an engineering time and data duplication perspective. Needless to say, features are a huge problem across the company. So where were we one year ago today? Well, effectively, we had a collection of disparate data libraries to kind of help with data utility tasks. Uh, we didn't really have a, a central feature registry. We didn't really have support for dynamic features. In fact, we didn't really have a central feature strategy either. We didn't really have integration with model serving or the rest of the platform. Features weren't really treated as a first-class citizen in the ML workflow. And users often dealt with data endpoints, which is sort of our notion of where data lives rather than features themselves. This overall kind of led to low adoption of these tools and kind of led to a sort of Swiss army knife approach where engineers took some initial libraries and built on top of them. Overall, there wasn't an opinionated workflow on how to create or use features. And you can kind of think of this as sort of like the new hope version of uh, the, the feature journey, where engineers are really on their own and sort of out trying to figure out uh, how to do ML with features. So where are we now? Enter Jukebox. Jukebox is a collection of Python and JVM components that help manage data throughout the ML user journey. They can be scheduled using a data scheduler to execute on their own, sort of leading to a decentralized management of features. Jukebox helps with collecting loading and reading features during feature training, during, uh, during model trading and serving. And the starting point for that is the feature registry, which is a single source of truth for features and helps maintain a single concept of a feature that spans both offline and online. Users can explore the registry via our feature gallery UI component in ML Home, where features can search, discover, where users can search, discover, and understand features they might consider reusing in their model. Users first create and register features that they're experimenting with, perhaps using the converter component to convert to our current standard format of TF records. Registered features, no matter how they're stored underneath the hood, whether they're Avro or TF example on GCS or BigQuery, can be retrieved by a collector component, which selects and joins features from upstream data endpoints. When joined with labels, these features can be used to create a training data set. The loader then ingests those TF records from GCS into Bigtable using a specified schema, and each team is responsible for their own Bigtable cluster, while we provide the tools to easily spin up a feature store. 
The reader is a Java library that makes features available at scale for low latency read from an online service. It also reads data from Bigtable to be used as an input to the model by the TF records produced at the previous stage. The reader then looks up the latest data, data, date partition for each table and provides optional in-memory caching for the feature. And ultimately all of that gets sent forward and joined with the model to kind of server prediction online. So this workflow made it really easy for us to address some of those early use cases with common libraries, but we ran into issues as with scale as we tackle more complex use cases. Overall, you can kind of think of Jukebox at this stage as sort of like Yoda in Empire Strikes Back, uh, where we're sort of guiding and helping with the sort of decentralized management, uh, but I think there's a lot better we can do here. So where are we going next? And that really leads us to the Jukebox API, which is a major part of our strategy going forward. We basically take the previous functionality that I just spoke about and expose it as a service API, which kind of lets us use higher level abstractions by connecting the dots between all these internal libraries so users only need to focus on their own workflow and not how data passes between components. Ultimately, a lot of the functionality you see here around preparing training data set, create a feature for online inference and offline inference are basically the same functionality from the libraries provided earlier, but now it's all sort of happening underneath the hood. So the service will automatically convert between formats, which is similar to that sort of format agnosticism you heard for, uh, previously in, in the uh, LinkedIn platform. Register Bigtable and GCS locations and feature, feature registry, join those data sets, and then compute statistics on those features as well. This has some inherent benefits to our users. For instance, we now this kind of allows for us to kind of have centralized management of features, meaning that we have decentralized operation of online stores with sort of central management through this workflow. That means that users no longer have to worry about multi tenancy. And for, for example, we don't have to worry about latency from other teams feature stores because we now have a centralized access pattern. On top of that, we can now make improvements underneath the hood. For instance, we can now start adding storage layer abstractions or in-memory storage for low latency underneath the hood without even users really having to worry about that. We can also start unlocking some capabilities like point in time joins, like time travel. Uh, and as we move forward towards versioning and maintaining feature transformations, we can expand and adapt the API to conform to those needs as well. This also gives us some more options as a platform. It allows us to change implementation details with no user involvement. So we can update internal logic about how data is passed without requiring users to update their workflows. So for instance, if we need to conform to new privacy preserving requirements, we can just add that underneath the hood. On top of that, this also helps us avoid version conflicts with user pipelines and avoids having users having to migrate over to new versions. And it makes tying in with other tools and integrations and the rest of the ML platform a lot easier because we can now provide a simple interface for them to build on top of. Ultimately, this is sort of helping us zoom out and become more of like the, uh, the, the uh, sort of uh, return of the Jedi version of, uh, of, of feature tooling, where users now feel empowered to actually kind of take this workflow and do the, the necessary tasks to, to ship their model in production. And ultimately, this strategy gets us to address the two main issues we highlighted earlier through a sort of building a feature marketplace by solving the organizational problem of supporting a variety of use cases and getting folks more comfortable with feature sharing and reuse. And to do that, we really need to kind of build an efficient and performance storage and scalable backend, um, while also kind of supporting a multitude of use cases across Spotify. And that ultimately allows these feature producers and consumers to come together using this centralized, um, the centralized API to kind of share and reuse features across Spotify. So what are some of the lessons that we've learned? First and foremost, I would say, listen to your customers. That generally applies to platform tooling, but it's extra important here. And one realization is that use cases can appear to be highly specific. So try and identify overlapping common or overlapping parts of use cases that are the most painful and don't have a great solution and prioritize those first. And if you pick the right use cases, you'll likely have backend engineers from customer teams wanting to collaborate on solutions because they can see the most painful part of the workflow becoming easier, which is a sign of success. On top of that, the, the build and buy are becoming, a build versus buy analysis is becoming tougher as time goes on. And our friends at Tekton have built something really awesome. So as time passes, tooling is either gonna become available open source in an enterprise way, and that'll keep getting better. Um, so if you're an early stage company, consider how far you can get with something just right off the sh shelf. And lastly, think about scale early on. So sort of a lesson from the data space, having a fragmented strategy in different parts of the company will lead to challenges with adoption and data management. 
So find opportunities for long-term partnerships and figure out ways to reduce duplicative work as well as data. And that's it. Uh, that's Jukebox in a nutshell. If you have any questions, you can drop them in Slack or reach out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, we're hiring folks across the ML platform to ta tackle a variety of challenges. So if working on a product that people love is exciting to you, let's stay in touch. And we hope to have some more exciting announcements later this year. Thank you.